Yahoo Finance is one of the best websites out there for new investors, but sometimes you want to do more with the stock price data than what you can do on their website. So today I'm going to walk you through my personal process of how I get stock price data out of Yahoo Finance and into Excel, and then I'm going to show you some of my favorite tips and tricks. So let's get down to business. Hey there, this is Wayne from Bird Research. The purpose of this channel is pretty straightforward. It's to help new investors just like you grab that financial future you've always dreamed of. In today's episode, I'm gonna walk you through my personal process of how I go about getting stock price data out of Yahoo Finance and into Excel. And then what I do from there, I have some great tips and tricks. Make sure to hang out to the end of the video because I got a deal on some stock picking tools that are perfect for new and seasoned investors. Okay, so here we are at Google. Let's just type in Yahoo Finance and click on the first result this will take you to the yahoo finance homepage. i've done quite a few videos on yahoo finance and i put a link to that playlist in the description so what we want to do here is we are going to go over and select ibm as our company today and just put that into the search field and click ibm and this will take us to the summary page of the ibm homepage. there's good information here check out those videos when you can what we want to do is go over here to historical data and click on historical data. Now at this point, we can just download this historical price data and then throw it over into, an, into Excel. I've done a video on that as well, and I'll put a link to that in the description. But we're going to take a little bit different approach today. So what I want you to do is right click on download and press copy link address. Okay, so before we go any further, I want to make sure that you have Excel fired up in the background. Remember, we right mouse clicked on this download button over here, so we have that link stored on our clipboard. So let's switch over to Excel. And what we're going to do here is we're going to establish a connection between Excel and that data. So click on data and get data from other sources from web. And then we're going to right mouse click on the URL field and press paste and then press OK. Just take the default and press load. OK, so here we are and our data has been loaded. So let's just do a quick check here. Let's sort from newest to oldest. That'll bring up our most recent price data first. December 21st, the open was 127.66. And we'll flip back over and sure enough, 127.66. So we're reasonably assured at this point that our data is good. So the first thing I like to do in my little tips and tricks is click anywhere inside the table. By the way, bringing this data over through this connection creates a table. And you're going to press Alt F1. And what that does is just create a generic chart right there in Excel. If you want it in the same sheet that you're working on, press Alt F1. If you'd like the chart in a separate sheet in the same workbook, then just press F11. And as you can see, you're over here at the chart. So let's go back to our data and we have our chart here now the first thing we want to do is click on the chart and press control one and that's going to bring up our pane over here where we can click on properties just select don't move or size with cells that way when we manipulate the data table itself we're not going to disrupt our chart too much and so let's move our chart up here and let's just do a little experiment let's go over here to date and click on 2021 and press OK. As you can see, our, our data changed. So we scroll down here a little bit and we can see that we're, we're just looking at 2021 data. So let's go way back up. And at this point, what I like to do is again, click inside the data table, I go over here to insert. And then what we're gonna do is click on slicer. This will introduce the slicer window and click on date and press OK. And we can move our slicer right over here. A slicer is simply a really convenient way of selecting different fields inside the data table so we can manipulate them. So what we're going to do is let's just play around with this a little bit. Let's scroll all the way down and we're just going to go all the way to the bottom here and let's click on 32621. Don't worry that your chart disappeared for a moment. Hold shift and then let's pull this down and then press on 1221. And as you can see, now we have that date range. And again, our chart has populated. Okay, so let's click back onto the data and let's just clear all of our, all of our filters. 
Now, let's say the data is, let's say you lose the data, maybe you delete a row, you delete a column. So we need to be able to refresh the data. So all you need to do is click anywhere inside the table itself, right mouse click, and then you scroll down here and click on refresh. There's quite a few different ways of doing that, but that's by far the easiest that I found. Now let's just go ahead and test this for a second. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete some data out of this table and then go and refresh it and see if it works. So let's go up here and what we're gonna do here, hold on, let me move this so you'll be able to see it. I'm gonna move this column over a little bit. Okay, now you should be able to see that. What we're gonna do is uh, deselect, select all, and then just select 2021 and press okay. Then click right beneath date and hold control shift down arrow. What that does is select all the contiguous cells in that first column, right mouse click anywhere in that shaded area, go to delete and uh, delete entire sheet row. And then we'll go back and we'll clear this filter, select all again. And as you can see, we had not just now have uh, December 2020 data. Chart reflects that as well as our slicer. Okay, so like I said earlier, we can just go in here and refresh it. So let's just right mouse click and go to refresh. And as you can see, all our data is returned just like new. Now, if you didn't want to go through the hassle of manually updating your data, you can take care of that by an automatic update every time you open the workbook. Right mouse click anywhere in the data table itself. Go up to query and the properties. And right here on this usage tab, it says refresh data when opening the file. Just click that and press OK. I'm going to cancel out of this. And then every time you open this workbook, those connections and this data will automatically refresh. Now, one other thing I want to show you that I like to do, sometimes I like to have two charts to analyze the data. So go up here to our first chart and press Control C and then click anywhere outside of it and press Control V. And that's going to bring up an identical chart, pull in the identical data from the table. Go to your second chart, right mouse click on it and go to change chart type. And then we're going to select line and press OK. So now we have both a line and a bar chart that's giving us different representations of the data. Let's go over here to our slicer just to test it out and make sure that it works. So let's go back up here. Let's try again and let's just click on, let's say December 1st of this year. We just want to Look at December and let's go all the way down to December 21st. Press shift and click. And now, as you can see, here's our data and we have a, a very nice little bar chart and then we have a line chart showing us the same data. So that's really a great little feature that I like to use. So, so as you can see, you can go over to Yahoo Finance and grab that data and create a connection in Excel, which really helps us when we're trying to analyze price data in Yahoo Finance. And then we can go in and throw in a couple charts, a slicer, and have some fun with it. And it really makes analyzing the stock data not so much a chore, but really kind of something fun to do. Hey, thanks for hanging around to the end of the video. Now, here are those offers I was telling you about. They're both from Market Club. The first one is called Four Weeks for Four Bucks, and it's Market Club's entire suite of tools for just $4. The second one is called Stock of the Week, and in exchange for your email, they will send you each week the best stock that their algorithms have surfaced for that particular week. Now, I put a link to both these offers in the description. Those are affiliate links, so if you do click on them, I may earn a small commission, but frankly, I would recommend these tools even without a commission. And as far as Market Club tools are concerned, I've also done an entire playlist that goes into a lot of their tools, so to check that out when you can as well. Thanks. I hope you got something out of today's video. And if you did find value, please remember to subscribe, comment, and like. And if you have a specific stock, ETF, or investing concept that you'd like me to take a look at, just put it in the comments below. Thanks for watching.